Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game. Get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. But where I do want to start is actually with college hoops. Because I thought for the second straight Saturday, we got a great Saturday of college basketball. A lot of good games. We will get to them later. uh, Because I thought, again, excellent college hoops with Gonzaga, Alabama, uh, UNC, that wild comeback against Ohio State, Tennessee, Arizona. I know Tennessee fans are mad. I know Arizona fans are happy after that one. Houston, Virginia, on and on and on and on and on. Unfortunately, though, as great as all those games were, I do want to start with what ended up being the biggest story of Saturday, frankly, coming from one of the worst games, not only that I've seen this year, but that I have seen in a very, very, very long time as UCLA in the second half of the CBS Sports Classic plays Kentucky, and it was bad. It was abominable. Final score, 63-53. to UCLA wins. I saw some stats that this was basically the worst statistical performance by Kentucky offensively uh, since the 2011 Final Four against Kemba Walker and UConn, so you know it's been a while. But the bottom line is this. Well, I'd love to sit here and give uh, you know UCLA a ton of credit and talk about them. As I often say, the more interesting story is in the losing locker room in big games like this regularly. That is certainly the case, and let's put it on Kentucky because in another big game, in another marquee opponent uh, against another marquee opponent, they just look flat, unprepared. And again, I say it all the time: there's no one else to blame other than John Calipari. And to take it a step further, I, I just don't know how you can forgive where the state of this program is right now or put blame on anyone other than John Calipari. And so, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the game. It was bad, but I just want to kind of contextualize just how bad Kentucky was on Saturday against uh, against UCLA, okay? So first of all, they trailed by eight at half. It's a minor miracle. I mean, it was, it was Kentucky got their, Kentucky fans, you got your Christmas miracle on Saturday by only being down by eight because the bottom line was Kentucky was terrible in the first half. How about this? 11 field goals made, 12 turnovers in the first half, yet you only trailed by one, tra- trailed by eight, despite having one more turnover than field goal made. The second half, it really didn't get much better, but the problem was UCLA couldn't make a shot either. And UCLA was dying to let Kentucky back into this game, and they did let Kentucky back into the game. They finished the second half shooting 10 of 25 from the field, one three-pointer made, seven of 14 from the free throw line, and Kentucky couldn't do anything about it. Kentucky, by the end of the game, how about this? They cut the lead to four with 226 to go. In the final 226, and I saw this stat from my buddy Jack Pilgrim, so I want to give him credit, Kentucky Sports Radio. Kentucky went 0 for 11 from the field, and they end up losing by 10. And so we could go on and on and on and beat around the bush. But the bottom line is this, is that with this loss, it just feels like once again, in a big spot, in a big moment against good teams, Kentucky does not show up, is not ready to play, and simply looks outcoached, outmatched. There's no adjustments. It's really bad. And now, here's the crazy part. After the game, we have some real stats to back up that you cannot deny that this program is going in the wrong direction. Okay, If you want to argue it's not 2012, Anthony Davis isn't walking through the door, John Wall isn't walking through the door, okay, whatever. But there were some insane stats that came out of this game after Kentucky loses to UCLA at Madison Square Garden. This one from Corey Price, who says that in Kentucky's last 17 games against AP top 25 opponents, just but before uh, Kentucky fans on the step, but if you're not a Kentucky fan, take a guess. If I said Kentucky in the last 17 games versus AP top 25 teams, what would you say? You'd sit there and say, ah, Kentucky hasn't been good, but you know, whatever. They were all right last year. It's not it's 17 games. It's not 10 and seven. It's not nine and eight. They are four and 13. 
18 in their last 17 games against ranked opponents. Now, I know some of that was during the crazy COVID year or whatever. Four and 13 in their last 17 games. Beyond that, how about this? I saw this from uh, Andrew Cassidy, who said that since John Calipari signed that lifetime contract, that was after the 2019 season, Kentucky is now 67 and 33 overall, 8 and 15 versus ranked teams, 7 and 11 versus power five non conference opponents. So losing record versus power conference, power conference non conference opponents, zero NCAA tournament wins, one SEC tournament win as well. Uh, by the way, the irony of using the, the, um, the irony of using the lifetime contract as a barometer of when all this started, of course, can't be, you know, we can't pass it up because of the fact, remember, John Calipari signed the lifetime contract because UCLA of all schools was pursuing him. I know that UCLA would not trade Mick Cronin for him, but what it says to me is actually something that I actually said last year after the NCAA tournament lost to St. Peter's. If you remember, one thing I said about Kentucky, this is what I said. I said, Kentucky is to me. They have turned into the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball, okay? They win a lot of games. They just don't win the games that matter. That is who Kentucky is right now. Dallas, they look great against uh, Washington and Houston and this and that and the other thing. Put them in a playoff game. They don't step up to the table. Put them in a big moment. They don't step up to the table. And it's the same with Kentucky. The last four, five, six years, ever since that 2015 run, it feels like in a big game, in the big moments. Kentucky wins. They they win all the games they're supposed to win. They beat the Vanderbilts, the Missouris, the whoever. But in big games, they are not ready to play. This is becoming a recurring theme. And as I said a minute ago, they're the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball. They win a lot of games, just not the games they're supposed to. And it's crazy. Because as I came out of, and this is kind of the, 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 the one message I want you to take out of Saturday with Kentucky UCLA, okay? As I sat back, and I reflected on everything that happened Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. One thing came to me. For the first time ever, now other people have said this, but I haven't. For the first time ever, I don't think that I can sit there and definitively say that there isn't a better person to run Kentucky basketball, Kentucky basketball's program right now. And it pains me to say this has obviously been a conversation, but listen, bottom line is I have been largely, obviously it goes without saying, right? A John Calipari defender. Um, And I think really up until even this season, I think there was reasons to defend him, right? Because we can look at the last three years. Okay. A couple of things. One, 2020 before the season was canceled because of COVID. Uh, Kentucky won the SEC regular season. They would have been a two seed probably in the NCAA tournament and had a legitimate chance to make a run in a national championship, okay? So you got to factor that in. 2021, I'll give John Calipari a pass because there were a lot of great historical coaches across college sports that struggled. Jim Harbaugh struggled. He almost lost his job at Michigan. We've seen what he's done since. James Franklin was terrible at Penn State. They're coming off a 10-win season in 2022. Uh, Coach K missed the NCAA tournament. Roy Williams got knocked out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So there were a lot of great coaches that struggled in the COVID year. I'll give him a pass for that. I'll even give him a pass for last year because if you remember last year, they were a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. But what's crazy about even last year, again, you go back to the big games, and I know they beat Kansas. I know they beat North Carolina, but I looked it up. Remember, there were three elite teams in, in the SEC besides Kentucky last year. Arkansas, Auburn, and Tennessee. Alabama wasn't very good last year. LSU wasn't very good last year. Three elite teams in the SEC last year, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Auburn. Kentucky went one and four against them as well. So this just pulls up the theme. They win a lot of games, but not the games that matter. And that's why I'm saying what I say right now is that I have always believed that through the darkest moments, through the biggest disappointment, John Calipari was still the best coach for Kentucky basketball because I believed that there was nobody that brought all of the elements together better than he did. We know he can recruit. He's great kind of handling the zaniness of the, the, the fan base, right? It's a, it's a tough fan base to play for. He said many times, you people are crazy. He handles it better than a lot of people would. Uh, the PR stuff is phenomenal. Listen, we could criticize him for whatever. He raised a ton of money for flood relief this year. Uh, the Gonzaga scheduling thing was really cool. And I think we always kind of understood, okay, he handles all of the elements so well. He might not be the best coach in college basketball. He might not be elite. 
but he's winning at a high enough level that you can't really criticize. Well, when I saw that four and 13 stat, that's what stuck out to me. Because at the end of the day, listen, I get that there might not be a guy that's as good with the PR. I get that there might not be a guy that recruits at the level that he does. But here's the bottom line. You mean to tell me that if you put other people in the Kentucky basketball coaching spot, some of them might not be as good in recruiting. Some of them might not be as good at this, that, the other thing. They couldn't go better than 4-13 and 13 versus ranked opponents in their last 17 games. Give me a break. And so what I, what I don't want to do now is start naming candidates and who should be next and this and that. Because what I can say is I think there's some really great candidates out there. I've also heard some names that I don't think would be the perfect person in that spot. I don't want to start speculating now because, one, it's not fair to the, the current players, the current coaching staff, assistant coaches, whatever. It's also not fair to speculate with people's names that are at other jobs right now. So that's not what I'm going to do right now. But again, when I look at this situation, I've always said nobody can handle all of the elements of, of being the Kentucky basketball coach. But at some point, like the coaching on the court has to matter too. And so that's where I come to the fact that I just don't know that he's the best guy anymore. Now, look, can they turn things around this year? Of course they can. They weren't great at this time last year. But I will say this. This was right when they started to peak last year, right? It was against North Carolina in this event. They blow out North Carolina, and they really go on and run the rest of the season. Well, right now, we're looking at Kentucky. It is December 19th, as most of you listen to this, maybe December 20th, 21st, 22nd, whatever. You know what Kentucky's out-of-conference resume going into SEC play is right now? It's a win over a sort of decent Michigan team in London in a game where Michigan's starting point guard got hurt. That's their resume. Lost to Gonzaga, and I don't even think Gonzaga's good this year. Lost to Michigan State. Michigan State definitely isn't good this year, and lost to a good UCLA team. And so what I would say is I don't know what the answer is. I don't have all the answers. What I do know is it can't keep going on like this. And I can't say right now. Now, could I change my opinion in a month, in a year, in six months? Of course I could. I was saying stuff like this about Jim Harbaugh many years ago. But at the same time, like, I can't say right now that I truly believe that somebody couldn't do the job, at least on the court, better than John Calipari. He's great at the off-the-court stuff, which is ironic because obviously once he retires as the coach, he is going to have an administrative role where he's going to be perfect doing the things that he's already good at. But he's got to produce on the court, and I'll just say, I'm curious to see what the next few years are like, okay? Because what I would say in general is this. There's been a narrative around Kentucky basketball for a while. Calipari, after the, the 2021 season, after last year's NCAA tournament loss, that no matter what happened, regardless, he was going to get all of this year when he had the reigning national player of the year coming back, Oscar Shibwe, and as he signed the number one recruiting class in 2022-2023, he was going to get all of next year. And then the idea was maybe he decides to step away after he coaches Dewan Wagner's son, DJ, number one high school player in this 2023 class. Obviously, Calipari coached his dad at Memphis. Now he's coaching his son, put a book in on his career. What I would say is I never really believed that narrative. Just never was something that I, I seriously thought was a realistic thing. But I got to be real. These last few losses to Gonzaga a few weeks ago, and to this one. This is the first time that I think it can happen. Because first of all, keep in mind this. Calipari, 63 years old. He's going to be 64 uh, in a couple weeks. Going to be 65 by the time next season ends. You can't coach forever. But two, you also just can't keep going on like this, right? You can't keep losing the volume of games that you lose to the types of opponents that you lose. So I have never been a... Calipari's definitely out after the after 2023, 2024 guy. But I'm really starting to wonder if that's the case. Uh, and that's really it. Like I said, no one's been a bigger defender. I don't wish him ill will. I don't wish the players ill will. But you look across college basketball right now. You can't watch Alabama. You can't watch whoever, Purdue, UConn, Arkansas, UCLA, Arizona, Tennessee, you can't watch these teams at this moment in time and say that Kentucky's on the same level. They just aren't. Maybe things change by the end of the year, but you can't tell me right now, today, on December 19th, 2022, 